Okay, looks like the seats are just about full in the room, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, this week's edition of the 30-minute workout. I'm Alan Gilbert, and uh, behind the scenes in assisting are uh, my colleagues Jeff and Jerry Bartles, as well as Angel Espinoza, who will be uh, handling any questions you have. Today's topic for the 30-minute workout is uh, described as using subassembly composer and cross slope profiles for super elevation. And since that's quite a title, we'll explain that a little bit better in just a second. Before we get to the agenda, just a reminder of uh, what we're doing here, the why, why are we doing these 30 minute workouts? If you've been here before, you already know this, but if you are new, these are basically gap fillers, I call them. So when you go to your traditional courses and class uh, classroom training, you know, you need what you, you, so many times you learn what you need to know to, to do your job. And a lot of these other tools and functionality and uh, gaps that I call them, it takes a long time to discover those things. And a lot of times you're on your own for those. So we're, our goal is to help shorten the learning curve with some of those gaps. The ground rules for our sessions are the same as always. Sometimes the examples may be abstract and be a, an example roadway in this case. And um, we always start in on time. These sessions are recorded, so we will send out an uh, email afterwards with the recording. And within a week or so, we always post these to our YouTube site as well. We do ask that you place your questions in the Q&A pane uh, instead of the chat pane uh, so that uh, it'll be easier for them to uh, see your questions. The, uh, the guys may miss uh, your question if it's in the chat. Okay, we're back to the topic. Let's get started. Here's the agenda for today. We're basically gonna be building a custom subassembly that is really just uh, an output parameter passer <laughs> for a lack of a better term. We're gonna grab numeric values from a, from a profile by targeting a profile that we design. We're gonna grab the numbers and use those as our super elevation values, okay? I wanted to point out here in green, uh, Jeff Bartles, my colleague who is also on did a, a video with another way to use this tool. And so Jeff used a um, output parameter type custom subassembly to drive the, the dimensions of the geometry of subassemblies so that he could transition those easily using the values in the profile, okay? So we're gonna do similar, but we're gonna use those values to drive our super elevation. So after we build that custom subassembly, we're gonna, of course, insert that and when you're, if you haven't used output parameters yet, there's, uh, we have a lot of video content on that as well online, but basically you need to put the um, subassembly that's finding numbers or generating data. You need to put that before the subassembly part um, that uh, is gonna require that parameter. And so if you're gonna pass it, you gotta pass it downstream. So think football, you can, you know, if you're gonna hand it off, it has to be a lateral, it has to be backwards, okay? So we're gonna insert that into an existing, in this case, an existing uh, assembly. And then we have to go into the assembly component itself and connect those dots. So we have to say, okay, in this custom part, we're grabbing or targeting that number from the profile. Now let's pass it into the input parameters of the downstream part, in this case, the lane, so that we can super elevate it, okay? So this custom, custom sub-assembly really contains no geometry. It's just a number generator, All right? After we do that, after we our assembly is good to go, we do need some um, uh, profile data. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna design cross slope and station, uh, just like our super elevation view is in Civil, 3, Civil 3D, which we'll talk about in a second. But we're gonna design with station and cross slope instead of station elevation. Use those cross slopes again, pass them into the sub assembly, um, through our custom subassembly, so that we can design our own super and not even have to use any of the wizard in this case. <clears throat> in the last case, we do need to, of course, target that profile. So once we have it in the assembly, we have them connected with their output and input parameters. We have to go and tell that corridor to target that new profile that we're gonna design. That is a super elevation profile, okay? So other than the next uh, slide that we're gonna be PowerPoint free, this is all gonna be live building in the software. But one background I did wanna add, 
because uh, some folks may not be as familiar, but, um, you know, why in the heck would you do this? Because we have a wizard calculator that can calculate super, build the super elevation controls. We can make edits and we can even edit the, the station and cross slope in that super elevation view, which you see a picture of there on the right. And, you know, so what else do you need? Well, what I've been asked for over the years is, okay, the super elevation view is great, but I can't create in there. I can only edit. I have to build some super controls first and then edit. And sometimes that's all you need. So don't want to say that's not valuable, super valuable. And uh, I love that. But sometimes uh, we have users that would like to not use the wizard and just in a profile, just like the view there, design that super elevation, but with cross sloping station. Because the manual method, as you see below, you can always just do profiles for to control the elevation, but you have to have a spreadsheet or something to reverse out the station uh, and elevation data instead of station cross slope. Okay, so I'm not discounting our standard two methods here that uh, we've done forever. This is just another alternative that I've been asked for over the years. Okay, so let's jump over to Civil 3D. We'll take a look at the drawing we have here first. So I basically have everything I need to build a corridor and I have a corridor, I have a horizontal alignment, I have a profile, existing ground profile and a design profile. I have an existing ground surface, which I don't really need. And I've already built the corridor based on this very simple assembly. Okay, so we got simple lane and a curb and gutter. Now, one thing I've already created just to save time is I copied this profile and built a profile that only goes from negative one foot up to one foot. This is gonna be where I designed my super elevation, cross slope and station in this view. So I went ahead and made a small little box so I wouldn't uh, be doing that in tweaking settings during the session. So now we're ready to go. But what we need, we need uh, for our assembly, we need a sub-assembly that will generate and go find that target that we haven't built yet. So we, we need something uh, in the assembly to do this. So let's uh, get started with sub-assembly composer. Very simple sub-assembly. We're gonna start here on the packet settings. We're gonna give this a good name. It's always good to have a nice name to your sub-assembly. And we'll just call this super profile. Now let's just call it super calculator. I like that better. All right. We're going to go to target parameters. We need to target that profile that we're going to create for our super elevation. Again, just to get the number. So let's call this super profile. The elevation will be the type because we're seeking the elevation of a profile. Now preview value is not required, but what I like to do here is go ahead and put in my normal crown cross slope. So you can see my negative 0.02% or, or negative 2% will be my standard grade in normal crown. Okay, so there's our target. You can see it up there. That's great. And I can do a display name if I like. I can just do something simple like that as prof that I'll see in the corridor settings. Now let's go to my input parameters. I'm going to set the default side to right. So uh, that's when we place it, it's going to go there first but we need that output parameter, right? We need a placeholder to hold that to value that we get or number we get off the profile. So let's create a new output parameter and we'll call this output super. It's an output parameter for super elevation. We're gonna choose, and there's a lot of different options here. I'm just gonna choose grade. Uh, I've used that over the years, but uh, several options you could do here. This is an output parameter, so you need to change that. And there we go. So we've got an output parameter. We have a target. Now we need to tie them together. So I'm going to go over to the view and I have a set output parameter variable here. I'm going to drag that into the screen. And it's asking which output parameter? Well, the one I just created called output super. And so now it's saying, okay, what's the value? What's the target? What am I targeting, right? Well, I have a target called super profile, but it's asking for a VB expression. How do you enter that? Well, the help file is, uh, is huge here. We'll go up to view help and we'll click on enter, entering or calculating property data, API functions and elevation target class. 
And it tells us if we want to grab the elevation of a target, we need to put the name of that target, period, the word elevation. I can do that. So let's type in what is the name of our target? Well, it's right here, right? Super profile. Dot elevation. And again, you can get much fancier here. You can do formulas in that and change the, the way it's inputted, all types of things there. But for now, uh, this is really all we need. So we're done. This is just to generate that number, pull it off the profile, use it, pass it downstream to the lane. <clears throat> so let's save the subassembly and I'm gonna make sure I read my name here. I'm gonna, I love to use the same internal and external name just to have it for me. So we'll call it supercalculator.pkt. And there we go. So now we have a PKT file of my custom subassembly. We need to import it into Civil 3D, into my session here. So we're going to go into my tool palettes. I'm going to create a new palette. And we'll say new palette here, and we'll do 30 minute. And I'm now I'm going to right click and import that PKT that we just built. Super calculator into the 30 minute palette. Okay, one other recommendation is to right click and do a refresh image. Don't ask me why, but it's uh, just what uh, I recommend. Can't explain it. All right. So now we need to drop this. Remember the agenda. We need to drop this into or before the lane that we want to super elevate. Well, let's just focus on the right lane for now. So we're going to click on our custom subassembly and we're going to click insert at the prompt and before the lane. So we click on the lane and now enter, enter. And we can see if we hover, there's that subassembly with no geometry, basically. And we can go into the settings and change this offset so you don't see all this and make maybe a smaller gap. You can do all that. Let's look at it though. Let's click the subassembly and go to the properties of that subassembly, super calculator. We could change the name and call it RT for right. You know, you could do all that here. Here's the side, the default that was red. Notice, remember I put that default uh, value when we built this target and there it is. So if this doesn't, if I'm not targeting a profile, it's just gonna default to that, okay? But now there's that one other step. Remember we mentioned that the assembly as a whole, we have to pass these values to the right spot. So I'm gonna select the assembly object now, go to assembly properties, construction. There's our super calculator. It's before these two, which is awesome. We'll go to basic lane. Here's my slope and I'm gonna say, use a parameter reference. Well, which one? I wanna use the one for super calculator output super. So now I'm saying, okay, super calculator is gonna run down and find that profile at every station, that number, and it's gonna throw that number into the slope uh, of the lane. And so we're passing that through. So we hit okay, perfect. So now our assembly is good to go and uh, our output parameters and input parameters are good to go. Now it's time to design uh, some profile data. So let's go down to our new little profile that's very small in elevation. And we'll select that and go to profile creation tools. And you can call this super line, super line right, name it, uh, describe it exactly what it is, unlike me here. And now I'm just gonna play some tangents, draw tangents. We're just gonna go from snap to the beginning of end because that's really easy. And so now we have a profile all the way at zero and I can go into the tabular editor and let's just set our normal crown elevation. So remember we're using elevations as slopes. So it'll be a negative 0 0.02 and a negative 0 0.02. So that's my normal crown for that right to uh, lane. And you can see that just below the zero line here at 0.02%. So let's go ahead and uh, we're not gonna see any change here if we run it, if we connect everything now and run it, it's all at 0.02% and that's where it was uh, by default. So we're not gonna see anything now. Uh, so we're gonna actually add some uh, geometry. 
before we do that, let me just zoom up and take a look at the first curve. You know, I need to know where, roughly where we are in the world. So around station four, we're close to the P, uh, PC and five, we're close to the PT. Station three and six would be good transition start points. Let's just use nice even numbers. Remember our disclaimer at the beginning about abstract. We're gonna be a little abstract here and make our typing much easier due to the 30 minute time constraint. So now that I know those numbers a bit in my head, let's say at station three, we wanna still be, that's our last normal crown um, station. So let's do an add PVI. And it says, where's the point for the PVI? So we're gonna use our transparent tools to pick a station elevation off the profile. And we're gonna type in the station 300. And for the elevation, remember, we're still at normal crown. So we're negative 0 0.02. Next station is at 400. And we're gonna be at full super. Remember, we're on the low side on the right. So we're gonna do 0 .0, negative 0 0.08. You can see that happening on screen. Let's go ahead to 500 and we'll enter the same negative 0 0.08, enter. And then let's just assume for fun that at 600, we're back at normal crown. Okay. So now I'm designing basically my own super elevation diagram, super elevation control line, view, whatever you want to call it and using that to control uh, the super of my corridor. That's basically what we're doing. And you can hover what's great when you have a profile, you can hover over every, anything. It always tells you what your slope is at that point or the elevation, slope in quotes. Um, other things that can be done because I'm doing it this way is it makes designing some very, um, I would say extravagant transitions, parabolic super transitions, much easier here because that's what a profile does, right? It, we create vertical curves, parabolas, whether they're par parabolic or circular. We can get very fancy with all that, asymmetrical curves, and have that super elevation transition in a lot of unique ways. Okay, so that's some of the other benefits of, and why people would want to do this. Okay, so we have the profile now. The corridor doesn't know anything about that profile, right? So uh, we need to target that profile. That's going to pass to the uh, custom sub-assembly, which is going to pass it downstream to the parameter for the lane. That's basically how this works. So we'll select the corridor and we'll go up to edit targets. And we'll do all the regions. And you can see the only target, because we didn't have side slopes on this uh, assembly, the only target it's looking for is the custom one we built. There it is. S prof. So let's go and say, you know what? I want you to follow that new super line that I built. Remember I called that profile super line? Okay. And now we need to rebuild the corridor if it's not set to rebuild auto. Okay. So now to make sure that uh, Alan didn't mess anything up, which is totally possible, we need to test it and take a look. So let's select the corridor. We're gonna go to section editor. And let's start at station three because that's where the transition, that's the last full super, which you can see the right side lane is at minus two. As soon as I step forward 10 feet, we're dropping. And by the time we get to four, station four, we should be at a negative 8%, which we are. Then we get to five, we're gonna start transitioning back to uh, station six, which should be at normal crown. Okay. Well, what about this, uh, or what about something downstream like a shoulder or even a gutter here? These slopes can be used anywhere downstream on that side of the assembly. Let's take a look at this gutter slope here. Let's add it to the party. So we're gonna go back to our assembly here. Select the assembly object, go to assembly properties. We're gonna uh, select the urban curb and gutter general. And first thing we have our gutter slope method. It's set to the super elevation outside lane slope. So we need to set that to fixed. So it will read uh, the fixed slope that's here and the input parameter from the super calculator. So now when I select gutter slope, I can say use a parameter reference again. And you, you really have two options here. 
So I can pick, and I would recommend most likely to pick that same output parameter from the super. Now you can, because the way output parameters work, if you just said, I want you to do what the lane does, I could select basic lane slope and it would give me the same value here. <clears throat> you just have to be aware that if there was something else overriding the slope of the lane in certain places, even your uh, new fancy uh, profile control, it's going to follow the lane and not your control line or not your profile. So I'm going to pick the profile here just for safety, but uh, either one in this case would work fine. So we hit OK. Need to rebuild the corridor. Now let's go up to the corridor object. And we'll go to section editor. And let's start again at three. All right, so let's walk through and let's see if that gutter slope follows. We'll get real steep here and then zoom in. We'll go all the way, but you can already see that gutter slope is following that same slope that we passed through to the lane. We also passed it to this part to find the gutter slope. Okay, so now I could go in and do the same on the left. I could build a profile which would be very simple to do, but I could be, I'd basically copy and make some changes of that profile and design my left lane <clears throat> and also left gutter slope if I'd like, more than likely a shoulder. And you may need control lines even for shoulders because of the brake difference in a lot of cases. But that's a totally possible as well. Close that. And let's jump back to the slideshow. So just a recap today, uh, the goal was to show another option for creating super elevation and uh, tying your uh, roadway to, or whatever you're building will have super, tying that to a, something different other than the standard wizard or just standard uh, profiles with station elevation. So in this case, we found a way to use cross slope and elevation and design from scratch using that method. And how we did that was by creating a simple little custom subassembly that uh, linked output parameter to a profile. And we pass those values downstream uh, after we inserted it. And um, then we designed our profile for the station and cross slope of our super elevation. And then we just set the target so that the targeting would work and uh, pass that value through. So that is all I have for today. and. Uh, I'll ask my colleagues if there's any questions that they would like to answer live or if we're good on questions. Alan, there is one question about showing the aggregate base just underneath the pavement layer that is six inches wider from the pavement layer in each end. Is there a way we can merge the two so that both follow the super elevation? Yeah, I would. Well, um, that may not be with the standard part um, because of the way it was built. Now, but with a custom sub assembly, you know, you can have that point follow anything, right? You can have it follow the point above. And that's what's great about sub assembly composer is we can set constraints to where, you know, everything underneath does what the top uh, point code does, for example, the outside lane. <clears throat> so I know it's doable with the sub assembly composer. I just don't know if any of our standard out of the box sub assemblies uh, could have a problem with that. I just, it's hard to speculate there. Yep. Thanks for the question though. And I think that catches us up, Alan. Great. Well, I'd like to thank everyone again for their time today and uh, look forward to seeing everyone at our next 30 minute workout. Thanks so much. <laughs>